sun is coming up. We are sailing, motoring along the coast of Dominica. Almost at the end now. And then we'll be sailing on to the St. Island. The sun is just coming up. It is, um, let me see, it is a quarter to six. 5.45 and um, it was a really quiet night. We were crossing the channel between Martinique and um, Dominica and the wind just picked up from nothing to a lot. We had just increased the sails because there was no wind and we were not moving anywhere and um, so Gary decided to add more sail to the, the, the you know, just add more sails. And um, it was going on fine. Then we hit the end of the island. It was still fine. But then we got a little further away from the island and the wind acceler accelerated, accelerated. Uh, they call it the acceleration zone. And it, doubled so it was like 15 knots and it went to of course it's on my shift it's always on my shift it went to 31 knots i think i saw i had to wake him up and i said you need to come out here and help me reduce sales because there's too much and we're going we're flying it was like eight and a half knots and it was too much we were hitting the waves pretty hard it was a good two meter waves in, in in the channel. I mean, it went fine. I didn't mind at all. I just, um, once we reduced the sail, it um, it came down a little bit. The, we weren't going as fast, seven knots, seven and a half knots, sometimes eight, but uh, you didn't feel it as bad. And then, um, and then once we got to Dominica, it was flat calm. There's no wind over here. Or maybe the wind just dried. I don't know. We'll see when we get to the end, complete end of Dominica and into the channel, and then we'll decide whether we need to increase sales or not. We reduce the sales a lot now so that we don't have the same surprise. Because, of course, how the heck does that happen? It's always my shift that we're in the channel. It goes to bed, and then it's fine. It's like a piece of cake. It's so easy, he turns on the motor because there's no wind. And then I get on board shift, and then boom, it's like, all hell breaks loose. I don't know. But anyway, uh, we'll be arriving sometime this morning. We are Gary and Chantel, and after 10 years of planning, we bought Maracuja and sailed south through the Caribbean. Follow us as we hike through the islands, climb volcanoes, and dive into crystal clear waters. Click the subscribe button and never miss an episode again. We are getting closer to Le Sand. Fishing pots, my favorite. I live for those things. So how was your night? Short. I feel better this morning though. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, kind of diverted. We went behind Dominica and just like motor sails really slow, like three knots all night, yeah. most of the night. And it was nice. It was calm, no waves. We got a rest. You could put it on like autopilot and just chill. We're not used to that. Yeah, that, the night was good. It was it's long, it's hard sailing at night. Well, these... You don't get to sleep, you should do two hours. We really only sleep two hours, we should sleep longer than that. These overnight passages, you don't get into the rhythm of them, so... Short passages. The Saint Islands are part of Guadeloupe territory, as are the islands of Marie-Galante, Desirade, and Petite Terre.
Check out this rock. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? It's called uh, Panda Sugar Loaf. Ooh. And there's another more field down there. And that's where we're going to go. That's the town where we need to uh, clear in. We get ourselves a stowaway. <laughs> From Dominica. Came a long way to be with us. But he's got to go back. Go back. Go see your friends and family. My grandfather was from this island, from my mother's side. And we see that the statue, the guy on there, looks like him. The people on this island were from um, a region of France called Brittany. So cute. So cute. We're going up. I've always wanted to come up here. I'm doing it this time. Make it, honey? I'm gonna make it. Are you gonna make it? <laughs> oh, yeah. You look like you're about to drop. <laughs> no, it's more like I'm about to drop. Is that the volcano? Oh. I don't know if it's on this side. I thought it was on the other side. Big dome over there in the clouds. Yeah. République de France. Liberté, égalité, fraternité. Built in the mid-1800s, this pretty little church was named in honor of a major French victory over a British attack occurred on August 15, 1666 which is a Catholic observance of the Assumption of Mary, hence the name. Okay, guess what crazy thing we did today? <laughs> we rented a scooter! Why? I think we're crazy. We didn't have enough road rash, so... Shh. We didn't die in the Dominican Republic, so we're doubling down here. Yeah, so we decided to rent a scooter for one day. Just to get uh, the feel of the island a little bit. It's easier. I mean, there's a lot of road to walk very um, pedestrian friendly. There are no cars on this island. Yeah. There's only motorcycles, bicyclists, well not motorcycles, scooters, bicyclists, bicycles and um, electric, golf, electric carts. golf carts. That's that's it. No cars allowed here. So that's really cool. The roads are very small. It's a tiny island with very small, small roads. So and, lot, and there's some relatives here too. We just met one. <laughs> yeah, we met a couple of them. Randomly. From my grandfather's side, my mother's father's side of the family. There's several here, so it's pretty cool to meet people that you know you're related to and you never even knew about. Yeah, small world. All right, let me get on that bicycle. That bicycle. Wait. There's some nice homes over here. That's a big one. Yeah, well, right now, keep your eyes on the road, buddy. Okay, check out this view. We went up to Fort Napoleon.
Let's go. Yellow brick. That's from the Dutch. So they came here too and then they traded. They leave their bricks here and fill them up with sugar, rum, whatever else. All, these, and all the treaties were done. There's an old door there. Look. See that arch? Oh, yeah. Right, let's go visit this fort. Fort Napoleon. Slave ship. It was built in Rochefort, France in 1784. Double or the food, preserve, rum barrels and things. In the middle is where the slaves all slept, between the guns and bullets and stuff. Big trade with uh, Europe. And they brought it from Africa, brought them from Africa and, and America and all that and did, did different trading. Famous for building their own sloops here. They had a specific sloop that they would use for fishing. They were uh, sailing sloops. Slaying canoe, they call them, but um, and that's what the fishermen used. But it's been, you know, forget, forgotten over the years. They still, what they do now is that they race them. They replace, um, you know, the original ship with mortar, which is much more eff uh, efficient because they can go further and be safer. But uh, they still sail them as con con a contest. That's a typical, it's a small one, it's a replica. They can take up to six uh, people. It's called Assetoise. This, these are called Tourment d'Amour, which means torture love, of love, torture, yeah. Tortured and love. Each little cakes that it's filled with jam. So there's a coconut, a pineapple, a banana, and a guava. So we're gonna guess. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Just give me the first one on top. <laughs> Somebody, like somebody's hungry. Three fifty for four of those. Pretty good. We'll share it. See, it's pie crust on the bottom. We saw there was a little video how they make them. Jam in the middle, and then she covers it up with a genoise, which is like a baking uh... sauce. Mmm, mama, <laughs> mom, this is good. Mama. I got the coconut. Mm -hmm. The legend says that the tourment d'amour was created by a fisherman's wife to satisfy her husband, returning from fishing, who would have then been so tormented by his absence from her. Cute story. <laughs> from Christopher Columbus, the first voyage in 1492-93, Santa Maria, Nina, and Pinto. Pinta. The second voyage, 93 to 96, he discovered Dominica, Guadalupe, Marigalant, and the Saint. This is in 93. He returns with a convoy of American slaves, cannibal warriors, women, and children. Many of, them died, many of them died during the voyage, and 500 survivors were sold in Seville, Spain. Wow. This is a replica of the Santa Maria. They did all these crossing across, you know, across the ocean and discovered in Guadeloupe and many of the Caribbean islands. The ship ended up in, um, what was that, Hispaniola, on the north coast of Haiti and, and sank there. And they used, all, in 1493, and they used, uh, they salvaged it to build the fort in Haiti. Fort Natuity. You say watch out in French. That's it. Watch the rocks. Watch the rocks. Oh, I feel it. Oh, geez. We're going down. Down, down, down. Pretty calm out there now.
know, maybe kind of creepy to some people, but this is one of the Lonia's family's tombs. So I know it can be kind of creepy to some people. <laughs> I, I like walking in cemetery because cemetery is, you know, this is where we end and um, most of us anyway. And this is where our history can be found. And my grandfather's family being from here, on this island, it's kind of like, you know, I wanted to see if I could find anything. He wasn't uh, buried here, but uh, some of his family members may have. As you may recall, Guadalupe is my birthplace and the land of my ancestors for the last 200 plus years. I recently learned that my great, great, great maternal grandfather left France for Guadeloupe in 1866 at the young age of 27 years old and later established himself in Terre de Haute et Saint, where he subsequently became mayor for 11 years. So this little island has a lot of history for me and my family. Well, this is your history lesson for today. This is one of the prettiest beaches on this island. It's called the Plage de Pompier. No anchoring permitted. We're gonna go fast when the mosquitoes are coming out now. So, not fast, but go slow. Go slow. Go slow, oh, she said. Oh my god. This is probably the one that got your uncle. <laughs> That's full great. the south side of the island. Interesting rock over there. <laughs> Falling over over here. Life on the hill. All right. We left this set this morning. It's a sporty sail this morning. Very sporty. 28 knots apparent. 28 knots. Wow. Why couldn't it just be like really nice and smooth? That was yesterday. That was this morning at 5 a.m. We've already tacked twice. We've got some nice big swells over here. We might get some rain and we might not. We're not really sure. The, there's a storm down there. And uh, not a storm, but a rain shower over there. But I don't know if it's coming this way. And up ahead, it's nice and sunny. So we'll find out and see. I we, we're we're covered. We're, we closed all the windshield and everything else. So our loop is making us really want to get there to get there. <laughs> it's not making it easy for us. That's for sure. Well, we picked today because it's supposed to get worse. Yeah. So I'm glad we came today. And here's Wawa. Just got. Whenever you're ready. Uh, I'm ready, Captain. So? Coming about. Okay. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. This helps us get more views. 
Join us next time for more adventures as we explore the island of Guadalupe. Until next time.